Is this what it feels like? Is this, is this what it feels like to be a Dodgers fan, a Yankees fan, a Phillies fan, Red Sox, any team that spends money on their superstar players? Is this what it feels like? Manny Ramirez, Cliff Lee, CeCe Sabathia, Jim Tomey, Francisco Lindor, J. Ram will not be in that list because Cleveland and their billionaire owner finally decided to give a player what he deserves. And honestly, this could go down as the greatest recap of all time because not only is J. Ram staying in Cleveland for the next seven years, my friend Bryson Stott made the opening day roster for the Phillies. What is happening? All right, all right, I'm being a little bit dramatic. I know I'm a grown man getting emotional over a kid's game, but as a Cleveland fan, I have been dying for a moment like this ever since I was born 25 years ago. We have never spent money. Every superstar that has ever grown up in Cleveland, been homegrown, has left us and had a Hall of Fame career on another team. So this is big time for Cleveland fans across the country. But this is a normal MLB recap. We do have a few other things to talk about, including if you're a Yankees, Red Sox, Mariners, and whoever is playing the Mariners on opening day, unfortunately, opening day has been postponed to Friday due to inclement weather. So this is every Mariners fan right now knowing that they We'll have to wait a day to see J-Rod. And also, I just want to mention, if you're going to any regular season games, please save yourself 20 bucks off your entire order on SeatGeek using code FUZZY. And if you're a Reds fan and you're saving 20 bucks, you're also saving yourself from seeing Shogo Akiyama ever hit in a batter's box for your team. He was DFA'd and released. Now, I don't mean to sound like a jerk, but Shogo Akiyama maybe was the worst hitter I've ever seen in my entire life. In 142 career games, he had zero home runs, 21 RBIs, and a 56 OPS plus. I'm saying this, Jacob deGrom, if he played in 142 games, would have more home runs, more RBIs, and a better OPS plus in 142 games when you're comparing him to Shogo Akiyama. Now, he was a decent defender in 2020, but in 2021, he regressed in almost every aspect. Now, one other note about the Reds, I do want to mention they have called up Aramis Garcia to join their opening day roster. He matched five or six home runs in spring, so good for him. He's most likely going to be in the running to replace Shogo, who I'm not sure he's going to get a chance to play with anyone else because the Reds are going to pay him $8 million to go play for someone else, but who would take a chance on a guy that really has been one of the worst hitters ever made. So before we talk about my friend Bryson Stott getting called up by the Phillies and also Bryce Harper looks like he is going for his third MVP. The dude is going off as I'm recording this video. Let's go ahead and break down the Jose Ramirez contract extension. Saying that out loud, it just hit me all over again. I cannot believe I'm even saying that. Christmas came early and I have to say Jose is an absolute, I know he's on Cleveland, but he's an angel. And I say that because he's a saint of a human. He left a ton of money on the table because of how much Cleveland means to him. We essentially have Jose Ramirez for the next decade and we somehow got a no trade clause in that contract as well. So J-Ram, he wants to be a member of the Guardians for the remainder of his career, he's getting $25 million a year, but that doesn't start until 2024. So if you extrapolate the next seven years, he's gonna get $150 million guaranteed, which he deserves more in my opinion, so he took a hometown discount. You cannot hate Jose Ramirez. $25 million a year for an MVP candidate. This might be a benefit to Yankees fans because Judge is trying to get 30 plus. Even though Jose Ramirez has been about as productive, he's been healthier. So maybe this is not good news for Aaron Judge, but good news for Yankees fans. Let me know. That's a different perspective that I'd never thought of. And again, this is not supposed to happen to teams like Cleveland because the biggest contract ever given out by us, when I say us, a lot of people get mad when I include myself, when fans say we or us. Let let us be fans, okay? Edwin Encarnacion got $60 million over three years a couple years back, and that was the biggest contract ever given out. And th th dude, Jose Ramirez is top 10 in essentially everything since 2017, and he's third in war behind guys like Mookie Betts and Mike Trout. I heard those guys are pretty good. I'm going to say this right now. Cleveland can be special if they capitalize on the extensions of Emmanuel Classe and Jose Ramirez, two guys that are in their prime and they're on very affordable contracts. The farm system is incredibly deep as well. 
along with that rotation. If we take a look at the rotation, Shane Bieber, Cal Quantrill, Zach Plesac, Aaron Savali, Tristan McKenzie. That is a very solid one through five. And then I brought up the farm system, Gabriel Arias, Tyler Freeman, Nolan Jones, George Valera. And if you've never heard of George Valera, let this home run do the talking. So I don't know what to make of the Guardians going into 2022. I'm not going to lie. Even if I'm being biased, I don't believe that they're better than the White Sox. The Twins are much improved as well. And also, there's the Royals who are improving. We have other teams in that division like the Tigers who have spent the last few years in turmoil, but they are finally turning it around. They're trading for guys like Austin Meadows. They're finding guys like Akil Badu in the Rule 5 draft. They selected Spencer Torkelson and Riley Green is going to be back. So if I had to be a better man if I had to put all of my Akil Badu cards on the table and bet them who's gonna win the AL Central I still don't think it's the Guardian so use this opportunity to get better and better because you could be a serious contender for the next decade if you actually sign a few other guys and call up your top prospects and they perform how we expect them to but that's the big if we don't know if prospects are gonna perform look at Jerks and Profar he was supposed to be the next big thing He's not very good. I'm sorry I talked a lot about Jose Ramirez in today's video, but I feel like I deserve that after being told 3-1 the last five years. And yesterday at night it came out that the Padres were heavily pursuing Jose Ramirez, which makes me think, what was the return package gonna be from the Padres? But either way, that is old news. J-Ram is mine. For the next decade and a half, and you can't take that away from me. Unless he gets traded, of course. All right, let's move on over to some spring training highlights, shall we? And this one, I mean, this is just as cool as J-Ram getting an extension, in my opinion, because Bryson Stott has worked so hard over the last few years, ever since we played together in high school. And after a big time spring training, he hit 419 with an insane 5 14 on base percentage in 13 games. He has made the opening day roster and I could not be more proud of him. So make sure you guys go follow him on all of his social medias. Now, speaking of huge spring training, let's talk about a few other stars who look to be locked in and ready for MVP consideration. Aaron Judge, hopefully an extension comes soon. J-Ram getting 25. I mean, Aaron Judge is probably gonna get 25 to 30 now and he deserves it. Honestly, again, I think J-Ram kind of undersold himself. So Aaron Judge getting 30 would not surprise me. He was an MVP last year. He's been an MVP candidate the last four or five years when healthy. In spring, he had four home runs and he hit 406. Another guy that is in prime shape, Byron Buxton. He's hitting 470 with five home runs in spring training. Rafael Devers and Bryce Harper, they both have six. Uh, scratch that, as I was recording, Bryce Harper hit his seventh and eighth home run. This guy is going for MVP number three. Could have been a four time, and like let's say he wins in 2022, he wins back to back. He could have had four considering he hurt his knee really bad during an MVP stretch back in 17 or 18. I mean, say what you want about Mike Trout being better than Bryce Harper, that is obvious, but Bryce Harper is no slouch. And also I just want to mention with the eighth home run, he passes Kyle Higashioka for the lead in home runs. Higgy is also showing off some insane defense as well. So maybe we get a breakout season from Kyle Higashioka. Who knows? So we talked about a few guys that are going to get some MVP votes between Judge, Buxton, Devers, Harper, definitely not Kyle Higashioka, and definitely not Keston Hira. But back in 2019, Keston Hira had an almost 140 OPS plus as a rookie in just under 90 games. He has really sputtered since then. But in spring training, he's hitting essentially 400 with four bombs. I am praying for a bounce back season from Keston Hira, from his teammate Christian Yelich and a former MVP in Cody Bellinger. So Cody Bellinger pretty much finished spring training with a 139 batting average, a 50% K rate, and usually we don't care about spring training stats. I know we spent the last few minutes talking about spring training stats, but those were in regards to MVP players, so they look to be locked in. This comes after Cody Bellinger hit 165 with a 45 OPS plus for the Dodgers a season ago. So Cody, He's completely lost right now. I'm hoping for the best, but for right now, I mean, Bobby Miller, who is a relief pitcher that not a lot of fans across baseball even know about, he might be more productive for the Dodgers this year. He was throwing 99 to 100 mile per hour sinkers yesterday. He threw three scoreless innings. That bullpen is going to be stupid with Bruce Dark, Gratterall, Craig Kimbrell, Blake Trainin. They have a bunch of guys like Bobby Miller who just throw 100 with movement. I mean, Cody Bellinger, if he can bounce back, how, how do you beat the Dodgers? Really? All right, everyone. Well, that is going to do it for today's recap. Thank you all so much for watching. I am in complete shock. This is one of the best days of my baseball 
fandom and my life, honestly. Honestly, being born and Jose Ramirez being extended, they're kind of rivaling each other. So thank you all so much for watching and enjoy the rest of these clips from the last day of spring training. No, he's right. Or that. This one in the air to left. Moving back on it is Palka. There's a grand slam for Nelson Cruz. 2-2 is back out of the glove and picked the throw to first. Nicely done. Gronenberg showing off his great abilities. Our thanks to Josh. Curveball. Splitter. That dude drills one to right field and got a two-run shot for Akil Badu. You know, really likes the guys he has. This is a high fly ball to deep right. Charlie runs to a spot, leaps, can't get it. Now they're going to send him home. And he's going to have an inside the park home run. Well, you don't see that every day. In the Yankees. He's going to get into this high fly, and that one's going to be driven deep. That's way back there. And you can kiss that one goodbye. Home run, Urshela. He didn't wait around either. Makes it two to one. 20.